Um, two things of surprise. Thank you. Very, very good round of opinions here. Um, I thought Itamar would be would speak rather more about the Abraham Accords, so I'm going to ask him a little bit about that. And also, um, the country that no one has really referred to, except me in passing, is Saudi Arabia, which, I mean, Egypt is the uh, most populous Arab country, but one could argue that in some ways, Saudi Arabia is now the most um, activist, I suppose is a good way of putting it, um, under Mohammed bin Salman. So I just wonder, I mean, if, for example, Saudi Arabia were to sign, to join up to the Abraham Accords, that would be a huge game changer. Um, is that possible in the next, before 2030, Itamar? Yeah. <clears throat> Before I before I respond, I'd like to make a brief comment on what uh, <coughs> Volker has just mentioned about connectivity or try efforts to to change the the traditional geography of the region. Two of these uh, aspiring regional powers, Iran and Turkey, have, have been doing that. Iran is seeking a land bridge from the eastern periphery of the region to the Mediterranean. This is a driving element of its policy to Iraq, Syria, and Syria directly, or Syria, Lebanon, and Turkey. The game they played in, Lib in Libya, the efforts to define economic uh, zones in the Mediterranean, so to block, enable to, to block the uh, laying of a pipeline for, for gas that Mona has spoken from Egypt or Israel to the uh, to Europe. The interesting manifestation of, of this this issue. Now to the Abraham Accords. First of all, interestingly, it's the only foreign policy success for the Trump administration. I mean, I'm a, a huge critic of the Trump administration, domestic and foreign policy, but this is something that they accomplished. And for this, they deserve credit. Uh, second, from an Is let's say Israel's point of view, it's very important. I, I, I've been pleased uh, uh, during these uh, three days to hear how proud uh, UAE officials and spokespersons are of these accords as an achievement of their diplomacy. And it's a very pleasant surprise for Israelis because our uh, experience with Egypt and Jordan, the countries that had made peace with Israel before, was they were always trying to conceal it or to, to lower the profile. And here is a country very proud of, of normalizing relations with uh, Israel. Uh, I think that uh, ultimately it will prove to be, to have a very important healing effect on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Mm. Because, because of the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians or the larger Arab-Israeli conflict created somewhat of an anti-Arab feeling in Israel that is an element in fomenting right-wing politics in the country. The open, warm peace with the Emirates, with Bahrain and with Morocco now, will open up friendly environments to Israelis. There'll be, COVID is now standing in the middle of that, but I think we'll begin to see a much larger movement of people to and from. Uh, there are three airlines flying between the uh, Emirates and. Uh, and Israel now, several flights every day, direct flights, and to, to Morocco. And Israeli society, I think, will be changed, transformed by this contact with, uh, with Arabs who are friendly and who just want to have a normal relationship. Ultimately, it's going to affect Israeli outlook on the Palestinians. So, while the Palestinians were initially angry with the Accords, they calmed down, and I think they will realize, ultimately, that it's going actually to... But on the, on the Saudi question, I yeah, ask, which no, you are neatly skirting around. It's, the Saudis have been very helpful, in, in, help, very helpful in all of this. Bahrain would not have moved without a nod from the Saudis. Yeah. And the Saudis have uh, opened the airspace to, to these flights between the Emirates and Israel, make it much... And there was a Saudi plan back in 2000, which I can't remember, to, for mutual recognition, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Saudi 
that original Saudi plan, I think, has been outdated by, by events, and Saudi diplomacy has since, uh, and since moved. But it's up to the Saudis. I think that domestically they feel that they are still not ready for, for that. Yeah. Will they in the next nine years, and what will Saudi politics look like? Uh, how many more princes will end up in hotel prisons or prison hotels? We don't know. So it's, it's a domestic Saudi question. It's not a okay. larger issue. Ibtisam, um, and also with the Saudi question, um, I mean, it, Saudi Arabia recently said that foreign companies setting up in the Gulf region should have their regional headquarters in Saudi Arabia rather than, as has been the custom, in Dubai, for example. That struck me as being a slightly um, unfriendly act, but they are your neighbors and friends. So what is happening? What is going to happen? First, I, I will comment on the Abraham Accord. For sure, it was a game changer in the, in the, in the region. And uh, UAU was bold uh, when it took that step now. But UAE is, is a small country and slim. Saudi has many constraints, okay? They are the custodian of the Holy Shrine, and they have a huge population and conservative, and some of them also uh, more fanatic Islamists, okay? It is not an easy step. Plus, they have that uh, King Abdullah initiative, okay? The two-state solution, and each of those signatures has been awarded with something. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the Saudi, if they are looking for what to be awarded, that to be uh, implement the King Abdullah initiative, uh, we know that and we heard that Netanyahu was there, okay, and met with uh, Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And it was about uh, uh, to join yes. the other. But what I said, the constraints, okay, no. inside, that which is still preventing. But I believe also uh, if Trump was still there, they will be going on that road because that one of the uh, Trump, what he considered a historic uh, deal yeah. he did. Okay. Well, he still thinks you may get the Nobel Prize. For <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if they will consider that he deserved that. Uh, okay, now coming back to the other question. You know, we are alliance, that's right. But the, the answers are not identical. This is, this is normal in the international relations between, between the states now. Competition is open, like Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, he said, okay? It's there who want to compete, but at least those whom they will choose. Still, there are those major companies, they did not close mm. their offices in Dubai. The facilities Dubai is giving, it's been giving before, is tremendous and huge. Okay, Saudi still, and I believe still, it needs a culture as well. Okay, so they, they will, but not now. I think they need, but part also of a new mm -hmm. project, this is when it has been done, the that including, resort, yeah. including Israeli. Yes. I don't think it, it can be without them. True. No. Thank you. I'm going to come back to you later. But...